Hello, everyone, and welcome to the LinkedIn series in the pipeline. My name is Brian Zidden. I am CEO of the appraisal tech company called Regora. This series is focused on highlighting thought leadership all throughout real estate, mortgage, and prop tech. Today, I am joined by a mortgage industry legend, uh, an OG Regora supporter as well, a man who I don't know if you actually sleep or not, but the uh, the chief lending officer of PRMG, KP, thank you for joining me here today. Hey, good good to be here. Uh, appreciate the kind words. I don't know if I, if I can live up to the word legend yet. I'm only 46, but I don't know, 21 years in the business. We'll see. C talk to me another 20. That's a pretty long time. That's, you know, uh, you've seen, you've seen some things, which, which is, which is what I was going to primarily ask you about today. The, the mortgage world is, is obviously in, you know, turmoil, bloodbath, whatever adjective people like to use right now, downturn. W would love to understand the mindset in, in the war room of, of a C-suite, you know, at a mortgage lender this year, as you kind of start to experience the downturn, like, what is the mindset? What, what is the like talk track with everyone? Is it like, hey, we need to make things as efficient as possible? Do you view this as like a time to grab more market share by getting other loan officers out competing? Like, what, what are the kind of first things that go on in that war room as you're talking about the strategies and, and how they change? Yeah, I, I'm happy to share that with you. I, I think that's kind of one of my uh, things that I do is I'm, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. I, I think what goes on in the war room is going on at, at, at many businesses across many verticals, not just mortgage lending right now. Uh, you know, you you know, you know, hear all this talk on the news about a recession and a recession is coming and growth is going to go down and, you know, jobs are going to be lost at some point. You know, that's the broader economy. We're in it right now in housing. So we are in a full-blown recession. So um, it is, uh, it's the worst that's been in a while. I know you and I were joking when we got on the call. I said, how, how are you doing with your first uh, downturn? You know, because I know, uh, you know, you and your team uh, uh, are doing great, but you're innovating and you're, you know, providing value and trying to come up with new stuff every day, as you shared with me. And uh, I think that's what lenders have to do as well. You know, uh, just yesterday, we had our financial reviews for everything through October. Um, we were like, remember how good it was through June? You know, uh, and this industry has been a tale of two halves. So the second half of this year um, has been uh, particularly brutal for for everyone. I mean, rates have just been um, going up. Um, home prices have actually been depreciating since May. So home prices have been, um, since the May peak of uh, appreciation, home prices have been coming down since then. Um, obviously, Rates have been going up quite significantly. June was a pretty big peak in rates. Uh, we saw another one, um, you know, even higher rates, you know, as recently as September and October, right? So we think we've seen uh, peak rates and peak inflation. So, you know, from a rate standpoint, you know, they may touch that, um, that worst point again. I mean, you know, touch up to it again, maybe potentially between now and February. But most people in the war rooms in the C-suite are saying, okay, last Thursday with that uh, consumer price index read with the CPI print, you saw that inflation came down at the core level um, quite significantly. And then it was followed up this past Tuesday with a PPI positive read. So the talk of peak inflation has been kind of out there since the middle of summer. You know, we had a bad read in October or September and then... Um, you know, you saw what happened in one day. Okay, so in one day, mortgage-backed securities um, had margin expansion, right? We've been seeing, you know, uh, margin compression a lot because uh, who wants to pay for a 7% note rate when you know the thing's going to pay off more likely next year, right? So you saw about 202 basis points come back into the mortgage-backed securities in one day. You saw note rates on the rate sheet increase 60 62 and a half basis points, over half a point. That 7% rate is a 6.5% rate in one day. And there was some follow through all the way through this week. So we have 15, 16 more data prints coming out between now and February. There is a Fed meeting December 14th. There's another one February 1st. So we could definitely see interest rates continue to improve um, over the next uh, 90, 120, 180 days. And in um, mortgage rates, you know, that's it. I mean, that's our business. You know, rates get better. 
everything gets better, you know? So, um, so now that everyone's looking back on the year and, and we're, we're through most of the pain, we're now looking into next year and looking forward and starting to do our yearly budget meetings and we're doing our tax planning and everyone's talking about, you know, um, how big is the distribution you need? Is our cash position where it needs to be? What are we doing with our servicing portfolio? And then on the front end, how are we continuing to recruit good originators? You know, we're a three channel lender, right? So we're hiring account executives in our wholesale correspondent channels. Never seen better talent than uh, the last, you know, six months. I mean, great, great AEs just thrown away by, uh, you know, large lenders not committed to the TPO space. Um, huge retail teams on the move looking for um, a lender that's all in, that has strength and sees growth in the future and is ready to weather the storm, bring on teams in retail, and then get ready to grow going into next year. So those are the things that we're doing. It's not all rosy, right? You know, there's pain, there's, uh, there's not a lot of profitability out there. And, um, you know, but, you know, would I think every C level is probably going the last two and a half years were amazing. So we'll trade six to nine months of pain, you know, uh, get our, our, our company in order from cost standpoint and um, continue to hire on the revenue side. And that's what everyone's doing right now. And, and I'll also, you know, kind of tee you up to a good little segue that, that, you know, again, we didn't even talk ahead of time what we're going to be discussing, but I, I think I can launch you a softball. <laughs> you know, when, when, when things are blowing and going a couple of years ago and we're doing thousands and thousands of fundings a month, um, it's hard to rip and replace legacy systems. It's hard to change, uh, you know, uh, things that are really big. Um, but now that we're doing, you know, much less volume, much less units, um, and people aren't as busy, now's the time to make big changes, not little incremental changes. You know, things like, you know, let's 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 reevaluate every single system we have in place, every tech vendor and every piece of the uh, of the of the manufacturing process of the loan process, and and now is actually the time to be doing those moves when it's a lot less of a haul, right? Um, it's, it change process change management is always a pain, but you know, if you had something in the back of the mind, like, you know, I need to evaluate my pricing engine or my LOS or my appraisal ordering system or my CRM or my point of sale or whatever, whatever, whatever. Now is the best good time I've seen since 08 to be able to make those changes. That's really interesting. And it's interesting that you, you know, you, you, in the, you started this off saying, you know, people are talking about the looming re recession. We're already in the, you know, recession here in the housing market. Um, and then it's almost the reverse in that we may, it sounds like be experiencing the pivot faster, you know, than the broader market experiencing the pivot. Everyone's, you know, waiting for this Fed pivot sort of thing. But, you know, if, if rates and all that have peaked and we're kind of going back that the, the mortgage world might be in that pivot process. And so to your point, yeah, now, you know, dealt with the pain, time to look forward. Um, interesting, you talk about like the tech stack. We, we've definitely seen that similarly where everyone's starting the planning process. But one, one thing that we keep, you know, a lot of folks here is like, well, we just let go of a bunch of people. We don't have a ton of IT resources to, to do, take on this stuff right now. So is that more of like a kind of still in the pain mode and going into 2023, you think that'll probably normalize and, and folks, well, at least they should be taking that stuff back on and, and taking on these tech initiatives? Yeah, I, I think where tech initiatives are analyzed right now is is direct ROI, right? So, um, you, you know, I, I get it. I mean, people are being judicious with their resources. You know, um, I have three calls a week with my tech team, um, 830, um, you know, every, you know, West Coast, you know, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And, you know, Friday is MarTech, right? So marketing technology. So we're talking about initiatives to make our marketing and digital marketing um, game stronger, right? And so um, that's kind of an easy one because that's really sales related and that drives revenue. That gets new deals to come in, right? So, um, you know, we're implementing this technology called WISP, W-H-I-S-P. It's like a QR code that takes eyeballs off the screen and pulls it into text messaging. So now I'm texting with consumers. I'm Everyone likes to text, right? So it jumps from eyeballs to thumbs, like in a heartbeat, right? It, it, the bar is texting you back and forth. You drop it in your CRM and now you're, you know, you're capturing and converting leads and business at a higher level. So if you're sending out a thousand pieces of collateral, a hundred thousand, a million a month, and you've got 
3%, 5%, 8% better conversion, that's real money. Mm-hmm. So if I can put that in terms of ROI, I would find a tech resource, right? And so, um, so you know, the, the sales tech initiatives, MarTech initiatives are really having the highest weight right now um, mm-hmm. in, the C, in the C-suite because even your most old school, I'm not on social media, I don't really care about technology, just go get more loans. CEOs who demand ROI as they should can see ROI through those kinds of initiatives. So, um, you know, that that's where you're seeing the, the bulk of heavy lift. Um, and it's also, you know, good to be medium to large, right? You know, there's some economies to scale. Smaller businesses, like you said, they might have cut out some IT resources. Um, you know, the good news is, you know, your team, obviously, when we onboarded with you guys, your team did a lot of the heavy lifting. And, um, and that was one of the big reasons why we jumped off of appraisal scope. You know, um, I, I couldn't get anyone to appraisal scope after it got sold, you know, uh, you know, to all the different firms, you know, it just kind of got lost in shuffle. I think Mercury bought it and they were bought by CoreLogic and it was just, you know, and, and we love the CoreLogic team, but there was just this transition period where I just, we would ask for things to get done be six months later, you know, and our courting process with you were like, we need a VA appraisal ordering system. You guys built it in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, Okay, that's pretty awesome. You know, these guys are hungry. They're disruptive, right? And so, you know, there's also that part of it. You know, how much of the lift does the C-suite have to bear versus our tech partner? And um, and so those are things that go into it. Um, you know, everyone wants to compress the time of getting a loan done down to seven days. If it takes me a lot less time to get my appraisal done because of the way you guys facilitate orders, that can be, uh, you know, that can show ROI, hard ROI. So, um, you know, again, I, I, I think, you know, these conversations are being had all the time. Um, you, you shouldn't lose sight of, uh, of developing, you know, but I get it right now, you know, times are tough and every company's got their own appetite for what they want to spend their resources on. Um, and, and, and trust me, I, I get that plight. You know, we were a small company once and um, we're not large, but I think we're in that Goldilocks position right now to where we're still developing and spending money some of our past projects like the ones with you guys and some of these other ones that we're doing um, are yielding and bearing, you know, fruit, time compression, um, reducing friction and allowing us to scale. So when the market gets back, we're ready to launch next year. And, uh, you know, we feel good about that. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that makes a ton of sense for sure. Yeah. You have a lot of advantages in that regard. And so you can kind of weather the storm now, but also position yourself, you know, really well, a year, two years from now, you know, as soon as the, the market kind of comes back. So makes a lot of sense. Don't say two years from now. It's coming <laughs> back, man. You saw last yeah. Thursday. You saw what happened yeah. in one freaking uh, – I, I, maybe you're comparing to two years ago. But um, you know what's interesting is, it, it, you know, a $4.6 trillion industry with capacity, you know, and I hate, I hate – it sounds so cold. I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize the fact that there's job loss and pain. Mm-hmm. But these are my teammates. These are my teammates. You know, we, we see it out there. But – the industry is doing 2.2 trillion this year, and next year is supposed to be about two trillion. So when there's less people in the business, because there's less business, it feels busy. So it can feel busy, even with less overall business. And that that's just our industry. That's how it is. So um, it can feel busy in Q1 and Q2 of next year. It can feel more profitable because the Fed has stopped rate hikes even paused and looking forward to potential growth recession in the broader economy, you know, the bond market mortgage backed security market starts to get out ahead and go, Hey, the fed at some point, and maybe that is a year or two down the road where they would even cut rates. Then, you know, it's game on, you know, you, you led this kind of line of questioning with housing. Housing has always been the canary in the coal mine. I mean, you know, we were part of the credit collapse in 07, 08 that crushed the broader global economy. We were, uh, you know, the, the the shining beacon star on the hill that got us out of the pandemic, you know, because our credit quality was so good and rates got so low, you know, because we're so interest rate sensitive and we're the first ones to be in full blown recession because of the Fed raising higher interest rates. We're very interest rate sensitive. So um, it will snap back again. We'll be the first ones to come out of the existing recession that housing is in, even if the broader economy then goes into a recession because you know, we're, we're rates get lower, you know, so then 
some more cash out, some more refis, some more people get off the fence to buy more homes because money gets cheaper. Right. Well, it is definitely good to hear some optimism with the constant doom and gloom headlines. So re- really appreciate the, the time and insights today, KP. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm here for here to serve, brother. So thank you. Have a great weekend. <laughs> you as well.